when blood hits a flat surface, it spreads. And depending upon the angle, this is blood hitting dead on. So what happens is if it hits perpendicular to the surface, we end up with a circle. And the width um, of the circle and the two axes is the same. Okay. Okay. When blood is traveling, it actually creates a streak. Now that streak indicates the direction of blood flow. Which direction do you think the blood was going? This way or this way? That way. Correct. Because this points, the spine points in the direction of travel. So what we do is we take the width of this spot at its widest point, we take the length of this, not counting the spine, and we take that ratio and we take the inverse cosine and that tells us the angle at which the blood hit. So what we do is then we'll take red thread and we'll start here where the blood first hits the surface and we'll back calculate that angle and we'll do that with a number of different spots and try to come up with the point of origin okay. where the blood, wherever was standing that had that blood come out, we can indicate where they're standing. We have a dummy up there that basically is designed to help us understand another phenomenon that happens. if. Say, for instance, there's an object in the scene that's not there later. When we're looking at the blood spatter, we'll notice that there are blood spots on the, on the wall, for instance, but there may be a shadow of an object. Okay, so say, for instance, that the perpetrator or an accomplice or something is standing nearby, the blood will end up on them and not the wall. So we should be able to see an outline of whatever was blocking the blood hitting that surface. And that can give us an indication of participant or an observer or another person that or an object that was in the scene that is no longer there when the analysis is actually undertaken.